Sunderland made a managerial appointment this week. Gus Poirier is, uh, is in charge at the stadium of light, replacing Paolo Di Canio. Oli, he took the job after um, talking to a former manager, Martin O'Neill, about it on the golf course. What are your thoughts on, uh, on Poirier taking the job? Well, I think, it's pro I think Poirier is a manager with a lot of potential. A lot of people speak very highly of him. I mean, I thought he left Brighton the way he left Brighton left a slightly sour taste, I think. I've got to be careful what we say there, given the various rumours about um, <laughs> and the various incidents that took place uh, in his leaving of Brighton. But um, So I think he has something to prove, but I think that he does come with a good reputation. Um, I think he has, um, you know, a very distinct philosophy. Um, I th certainly think he's the kind of guy who will be there for the long term and will bring some structure and some order to a place that has descended into chaos. Um, predictably, you have to say, under Paolo Di Canio. And I think the problem that Sunderland fans have and Gus Poirier has is that they allowed so many new players, they allowed Di Canio to sign so many new players um, during the summer that Gus Poirier has now inherited those and he's going to be expected to make the best of that. It's a, a while until he can get any new signings in. So I think it's an incredibly difficult job, mm. but I think, he's a, I think he's a good appointment. Yeah, is this, is this all De Canio's doing, Charlie? But they've, they've got one point in the, in the Premier League. It's not clear not being a great start, but were there signs before yeah, De Canio? Well, I don't think they're a very good team. Uh, and I think, I have, to, I have to disagree with Ollie here, I, I think he's a bad appointment. I think he's very lucky to get the job. I think... Uh, he was tactically outthought by Ian Holloway in the playoffs. He had a, he had a bigger budget than Palace, mm -hmm. um, and you know, he's, he's, he has, you know, I agree with all. He's got something to prove, but I can't quite understand why Sunderland went for him. Um, I, I think they've been better off. Neil Lennon, I'm a fan of at Celtic. Malky Mackay at Cardiff. We we know how unsettled it is there behind the scenes. But they'd have had to wait for Malky, wouldn't they? Well, well you know, they, they you know. I know they weren't not keen long. on, yeah, but yeah, but not keen on over keen on paying compensation. Would Neil Lennon have gone there? Too? Yeah, I do. Would yeah, it? yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, and and I know there's the argument about Celtic in the Champions League, but um, you know you look at some of the players like Wanyama who, and Gary Hooper. You know they left Celtic, and I think you you, you'd ha you know Lennon would, would yeah. feel the same that the Premier League is the place to be. Yeah. And you know you can't just stay at a club for four or five games a season, which obviously Celtic is really, isn't it, yeah. in terms of the European football. So I, th I think Poirier's got a lot to prove. I think Sunderland are going down. Uh, he'd love to be proved wrong. Uh, I, I just, just don't see any way back for them at all. Um, He's going to show his players the motivational talk. First dressing and talk is that minute clip of you there, Charlie, I think, for his players. <laughs> wrong appointment. They're going down. <laughs> Go and prove him wrong. But I don't think, you know, they're good enough. Uh, and this is obviously where uh, you know, De Canio is to blame uh, because he signed so many players, 14 players in the summer uh, and generally they don't look uh, better, actually worse than the players he got rid of. You know, De Canio was a great appointment short term because he did what was expected and that yep. kept Sunderland up but you know, Paolo De Canio was never going to be a long term appointment was he? That, that was pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. um, and Poirier's got a major job, uh, but as I, I think he'll be back in the championship. I can also feel Martin's pet subject coming on now, directors of football. I mean, I think that, you know... They <laughs> you know me so well. They've got a beauty there as well, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. Roberto. I mean, yeah. this, I mean, everyone has said, oh, Paolo Di Canio signed all these l l lousy players and he was the manager, so the buck stops with him. But there was the director of football there as well who is, is the head of recruitment and when you when these guys explain how it works they go out they you know the manager identifies the position that we that, that we need and then I go out and find all these wonderful players well he's found 14 there half of which can't get in the team yep um and he is still there and and, and and this is this is one of my pet subjects the manager's got 10 games and the and the director of football's judge me in 10 years all the time and and mm. You, you do look at this stability. and stability. Well, well, you, but you, well, what? <laughs> it's, it really only works if it's successful. By the way, if, if you know, you don't mm. stick with a guy when you're bottom of the league with one point. And you look at, you do look at Sunderland and think, well, also, they used Kevin Ball, I think, quite, quite callously in many yeah, ways. Yeah, almost I mean, a tactic. We he, felt, had, didn't you? he had, he had three games, one of which was the a Capital One Cup, but he had two matches in the Premier League: Liverpool and Manchester United. 
they, it wasn't even as if they took another week to appoint Gus Pye. I mean, the minute they got those two matches out of the way, I think it was 48 hours later, Gus Pye walks through the door. So you do wonder whether the, the plan all the way along is we look like we're going to get stuffed in these matches, let Kevin Ball take that so he, he's got oh. two defeats and then the new guy comes in, he's got half a chance of beating Swansea. Um, which I thought, you know, Kevin Ball's been there a long time and if I was in his shoes, I would have felt very, very used by yeah. that because I don't think he was really in with, it, in with a chance of that unless he performed a miracle and beat Liverpool mm. and Manchester United. Yeah, so, I feel sorry for Sunderland's fans because mm. their support is superb. Mm. Uh, the Gates has still been pretty, pretty impressive. I was up there the other week for the Arsenal game and, you know, they were backing the team and it was interesting, you know, watching on Sky Sports News when they are interviewing all the fans the day the Poirier announcement was made and... I think they're generally very happy. Yeah. Not quite showing as much enthusiasm as you for. He's got Swansea away in his, in his first game in charge. He's got a tr he'll try to pass his way out of the bottom three, won't he? Yeah, well, he's going to have to do something. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I think you know, it's, it's, it's a winnable game, Swansea, because they're not in a, in a great place. Um, I think the toll of Europe will catch up you know, mm. on them. Uh, but even if some of them win that, I don't think they'll be um, getting many more. And you can pass so. your way at the bottom three, by the way. You, you know, that's not, that's not necessarily, a, yeah. you know, oh, that it's going to foul because he's not going to lump it. You can pass your way out of the bottom three. Um, mm. And maybe that's what, you know, with, 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 one would imagine the sort of players that, that were identified are the sort of guys that are going to need to pass their way out of the bottom three. It might work.